Craig, there have been a, a number of big games for the New Saints over the years, yeah. but this is arguably the biggest in the club's history, just 90 minutes away from a, a league phase. Yeah, it is. It's where we've all worked for. It's, it's where we all want to be. I remember speaking to Mike probably 18 months, nearly two years ago, regarding coming back to the football club as manager. And um, it was where, where Mike wanted to be, where the club wanted to be, where he felt the investment was going to be. And, um, and we, we are here nearly two years later in, in, in a 90-minute game away from from possibly getting to a group stage of European football, which is not only, I think, is massive for for TNS, it, I think it's it's big and massive for Welsh football. You know, we um, we are, we are take pride in representing Wales for in European competition. So we um, we we obviously want to do for our club first and foremost. But I think the the uh, prestige and the and, and all the other things that come along with possibly qualifying, then then that would be great for Welsh domestic football as well. We spoke on the pitch, obviously, last week out there in Moldova. Since then, you've had the benefit of watching the game through yeah. again. Have your thoughts perhaps changed somewhat from what you said in the immediate interview? No, not really. Not really. Looking back, really encouraging. You know, I thought um, I thought we got our shape perfectly well. I thought we got the team perfectly well. I thought the players done an unbelievable job. You know, if you look back at it, you know, they, they played Applewell in the previous round and there was only one goal in it. It was 2 1 aggregate. You know, Applewell scored penalty and they scored a world class goal. Um, so I think where we were, it was credit to the players and, and credit to the staff of, of our game plan and our preparation and, and how we limited them to a one shot a goal, which ended up being a goal because it took a huge deflection. So I think from that point of view, um, the, the lads got it spot on, the staff got it spot on, and we just need to make sure that now that we're not going to overestimate them, sorry, underestimate them, should I say, because they're, they're a good team. If we if we set out tomorrow and underestimate them, then you know we'll we'll be it'll be a long night for because they are a good team, and and I don't think anyone give us not anyone, but not as many people give us enough credit on the night how well the boys done on the pitch. You know, we like I said, we limited them to. To, to really limited amount of opportunities and that was the that was the hard work put in off the pitch by the staff and also more importantly the hard work put in on, on the pitch by the players on the night. So it will be a very, very tough game again tomorrow night. And when we did our pre match press conference last week, you said that your desire was that we would still be in the tie <clears throat> come the ninety minutes. And at just one nil down we are very much in that position as far as the players themselves are concerned have you had to do anything with them in terms of focus or do they pretty much know exactly what they have to do going into this game yeah i think they do you know and when, when, when you going into the game away where we needed to be and what we needed to do like you said we've, we've done our intense homework on them and we knew they were a good team you know we we've had the the first hand experience of playing at Apple Nick here. Obviously we drew nil nil at home and got beat three nil away. So they've got beat two one on aggregate. So that just proves where they are, how good they are. And um and like I said, the players um are in a really good place. We know we know the game plan, we know what we have to do um tomorrow night. We know that we um we didn't underestimate them like a lot of people may think so, you know, and also as well reflective then, you know, the You've got to be a very good team to be Sheriff to win in the the league in Mondo because they're a they're a hugely dominant force. You know, financially, size of the club, everything. You know, so so obviously Petra Cub have, have had a fantastic season, got five or six full internationals, and they are a good team. But the lads know where we are. The lads know where we need to be, and um, they're fully fully on board. We had a really good training session today. We had a, a great one on Saturday. You know, match prep and, and ready with the game plan. And um, at home, we're very good at home. You know, last time we got beat at home was hacking. You know, and before that, I don't know when it was. So we um, we've um, done very well at home. Park Hall's always been a, a fortress for us, and we want to make sure the same tomorrow night. You know, we are prepared right, but we're, we're not we're not overconfident. I think just um, doing your preparation right gives you a boost and gives you a bit of confidence because the lads know what they're going in for and they know how they need to perform. And in terms of the starting eleven, as you say, Craig, that is 
pretty much the hardest part yeah. of the job, especially with such a, a big game coming up. Yeah. What kind of a head coach are you away from the public eye? Do you select your squad several days before, select your starting 11 and stick with it? Or do you find yourself often tossing and turning at night perhaps and mulling over things and maybe making a few changes along the way until you make the public declaration? Yeah, I think you probably have to be pretty cold and callous if you don't have any sleepless nights. It's, it's the worst bit of the job by a million miles. Um, but I think what I seen last week, I had a had a two plans in my mind. You know, myself, Sarge speak about a regular. Um, we speak about every day, and we, we've we've thought about this for probably a week or so, and, and we thought that it was um, what we needed to do away, as we spoke about. And it's and it is a little bit different to what we need to do at home. So we had um, we've got we've got the the game plan. And whether that personnel changes or not is a different story. Obviously, we'll have to wait till tomorrow night. But the game plan certainly might be a little bit different. But but yeah, from from that point of view, it's um, yeah we the lads know what the team is. The team's out there now. We've done some team shape today, so they they know who's playing, who's not playing. There's obviously going to be some disappointed lads amongst that. But as I keep saying, then. You know, you look at the last three European games, arguably the subs have been as important, if not more. You know, coming on with 20 minutes, half an hour left when when let lads have put a real shift in. It's, it was the difference between us still being in the game, going into tomorrow night's game, and not because if you put them lads on, they don't do a job in the, the team's tired. You know, they've run the socks off and, and then they don't come on and do their job. It ends up 2 3 4 nil last 20 minutes of a game. And, um, and they didn't. They, they come on and they give give us something extra, and they give a you know they played their part hugely. So it'll be exactly the same tomorrow night. Um, who knows what will happen? You know we don't really want to go to extra time and penalties, but there's always that agenda. You know there there as well. So, so substitutes and, and players focus and minds and is going to have to be one hundred percent on it because, like I said, you know it could go to pen, yeah extra time and penalties, and if that is the case then subs would be more important than what they have been over the 90 minutes. And as you went for that final selection, what was the injury situation like? Because obviously there are one or two players yeah. on the, the fringes of that. Did you have a, a full squad as such to choose from? Yeah, no, Josh Pask was Josh Pask a couple of days earlier, tweaked his media ligament, but he's been back in training again, so Josh will be available again. So if anything, we've strengthened the squad. Obviously, um, Josh played the first three games um, of, of Europe, Dessa Choman away and Ferenc Varus away. So he's obviously been an integral part of the, the team, you know, but Pasquale will be available again, um, back available for the squad tomorrow. Craig, as always, thank you for your time and with such a, a special game on the horizon, everyone at the New Saints wishes you, Chris Sargent, the staff, and of course, the players, all the very best tomorrow evening. Thank you very much, Rev. Thank you.